Hey everyone, on today's video, I'm going to break down the numbers on a fourplex that I purchased back in 2020. This is a little four unit in the city of Orange here in Orange County. I posted some videos on renovating the property and some of the viewers of the channel wrote in some comments, hey, look, I'd like to know what you paid for the property, what the fix up costs were, what's your return on investment. And as we're completing the renovation right now and putting the final touches on the property, we thought it'd be a great idea to post the video on the numbers. So let's dive in real quick. All right, so this is uh, the property right here. Um, decent little fourplex street. And um, this, was, this was acquired back in uh, September of 2020 for $975,000. So here's a little Google map view right here. This is the property right at the end of a cul-de-sac. You got some decent fourplexes on the street. And not a lot of buildings trade on this street at the time that I purchased it. And so what I looked at, I said, okay, this is a nice little fourplex. You got individual garages, you got some tandem parking here. Everybody can kind of park up front and it's single story. Single story is really hard to find. You really can't go wrong. And at the time this was priced at just under a million bucks. So I felt, hey, look, that's a really good basis for a fourplex in Orange County. At the time, interest rates were really low. I got a 30 year fixed loan at 75% LTV. Uh, at three and a half percent. So it was kind of a no brainer. And uh, that's the overall view of the property. Let's dive into some of the numbers. So going in right here at acquisition, the rents were $5,425 a month. And we are going to rent our last unit, the front unit that we just got completed for $2,500 a month. That's going to level off our rents at $9,000 $515 a month, which was a 75% increase. And before we go into the numbers further, let's take a look at what the building looked like at acquisition. So this is some of the interiors. You could see these were original, pretty blown out too. Yeah, all this had to get redone. All the cabinets got gutted out, the little small stoves we put in full size, really dated, all older windows as you can see. A lot of clutter. This was like, I think some kind of tenant made home improvement DIY uh, shed thing. We tore all that out, tore this whole kitchen out. Everything was gutted top to bottom. So all the flooring was ripped out, the bathrooms were ripped out, the windows, the sliders. Um, luckily the roof was put on when we acquired it. The, owner, the previous owner had already put on a new roof, but all the units needed to be fully updated. So that's kind of what it looked like at purchase. And this is what it looks like now. We hired Sullivan Property Management to um, manage the property. And uh, we did the renovation, but they're doing the management. So um, it was a good learning experience, a good process. So these all have washer dryer stackable units in the kitchens. You can see here we all new dishwashers, appliances, cabinets, windows, flooring, completely changed everything. So a lot of work. A lot of work for sure. Took a lot of time too. Because what happened was we closed on this in September of 2020. And then um, COVID, what, we're in COVID at that time. Couldn't really do a lot. Didn't want to rock the boat, left things alone. Was at a really good loan for the property. So we didn't want to make any real big changes. So um, it took a little longer to do the renovation and to get to market. If this was a normalized market, we would have got there sooner. So it was, it was about two years project to, from start to finish. So let's dive in on the numbers here. So the purchase price was $975,000. And as I mentioned, we got a 75% loan, which was $731,250. Only put in 243,750 bucks. I front loaded the purchase and put in an account $75,000 for future renovations. We already knew through the inspection that the property is going to need a lot of work. And the closing costs, that's the loan, that's escrow, all the, all the goodies uh, to close the deal, that was $17,856. So all in was $336,606. And then annualizing the current, the rent roll at close, we're at $65,000. I just took off a 35% expense load baking in expenses and vacancy to factor in an NOI of 42,315, which was a 
0.34 cap rate and just below 14 times growth. So that was a pretty good deal. And that 3.5% 30-year fixed financing, you can make those numbers work. You're not feeding the building too much. And um, there's just, you can capture upside when the tenants move out. So what had happened was over, it's probably about a year or so within COVID, two of the tenants moved out. And one was not paying rent. It was eight months they didn't pay rent. So we had to evict that tenant. So we already had pretty much three out of the four units empty. So I went in and did a raise. We had a pad of $140,000 that we anticipated to fund the asset. You don't want to do a ton of capital calls, right? So I'm learning on my own dime. If you raise money from investors, they don't want to have to get a call. Hey, I need a you know another a, a capital call. They don't want to put more money into the deal. They want to get money out of the deal. They want cash flow return on their capital. Um, but they knew going in that you know um, whenever we do a partnership deal, you front end them. If you are buying a building that needs a ton of work, you tell them on the front end, look, we are not raising for all the renovations. We're going to have. We're just doing, for example, in this one that I did on my own, I raised. You know, I put in on my own money seventy five thousand dollars, but then I had allocated another 140. And that's what you want to do whenever you have partnership deals. You want to kind of manage everybody's expectation on the front end. So um, the additional renovation costs, I padded, I put in 140,000. Uh, I ended up spending another 123,462 all in. So the total spend was $198,462. I mean, that's, that's us trying to run it pretty, pretty thin, but still providing good product. It was tough. That's divided out. That's fifty thousand a unit, right? And we got to be mindful. We're not on a prime coastal street. This is a. It's still considered a bread and butter uh, street, workforce housing street. And we're putting fifty thousand uh, dollars per unit into that. It just is what it is. That's why you got to make your money on the buy, and you got to buy right. Um, but this is where the deal ended up um, working out pretty well. Um, I decided we were. Renovating the, the units, we were through three out of the four units. There was still the original tenant in the front unit and rates were going up in the summer. Rates were going up and I said, geez, I'd like to finish out, renovate the last fourth unit, have the building completely stabilized and to its optimal level and then refinance. But I saw the market was starting to get away from us and I was already doing some other reno, uh, refinances on some other buildings and shout out to First Foundation who did this loan. Um, they were saying, hey, look, we're going to raise rates soon. So if you want, this is an optimal time within the market to go ahead and move forward with refinancing this property. So I elected to do it in the middle of the renovation. Um, so I was kind of unsure on you know, how that would work out. But it all worked out. It was uh, already proved out majority of the units were the top line rents. So the appraised value came in at a million four seventy, and I was able to get a 65% LTV on that property. So that equated to $955,500. I paid off the existing loan of $713,500. Now I factored in a little bit of a principal pay down. That original loan had a principal and interest. So I paid the loan down from the original amount. That was the loan payoff approximately. So I got $242,000 in a uh, check, a cash out refi proceeds, and that's tax free. So I was able to take that and lower um, the amount of money that I put into the deal. And just to go in through the interest rates, the reason why I also pulled the trigger was uh, the interest rate was 3.875. So it was a little bit higher than the initial loan that I had. Um, however, it went interest only. So my payment went, uh, went down. You can see right here. My monthly payment interest only on the new loan was $3,085. My previous monthly payment was 3,283. So I decreased my loan amount or my, my, my monthly payments. And then I got a $242,000 tax free um, proceeds. And then I went in and just focused on using some of that money to reimburse myself from the, the capital call. So here's kind of the summary. So the down payment, original down payment, the closing cost, the renovation costs. I did the refinance, I paid off the loan and I had this in reserves from the initial raise that I have in the checking account allocated for this property. So my total cash in the deal is 263,666. Just going off this appraised value, it could be lower today because rates are way higher, but let's just say it's a million four. 
in appraised value today, right? Minus your 955. So you got what, 450 in equity minus your 263. Um, you're, you got a couple hundred grand in equity. It's not, it's not a, a home run, um, but it's, it's a base hit. And um, you know, as, as longer and longer I'm in this business, I, I'm, I'm constantly reminded this business is a game of singles and doubles, not just home runs. If you're always trying to hit home runs, you might not uh, you know, make a lot of deals, right? They'll all turn into home runs in 15, 20 years from now. But I thought this would be a really good start, work and learn the business on my own dollar, my own nickel, and the mistakes I made if I spent too much money here or I delayed you know, working with, it didn't work with the right contractor, didn't have my vendors tight, whatever the learning, you know, the lumps that I worked through, it was on my own dollar. So if I ever do raise capital from investors, I'll be a good steward of their money. Um, and then I'll also learn that, you know, it's the same mechanics on a four unit renovation property as it is doing a 10 or 20 unit property. So there's a lot more zeros behind it, but it gives me the confidence directly to then focus, hey, maybe I might wanna train this out, maybe one day go into an eight unit building and do it on an eight unit or a 16 unit building or such and such. So it's just growing and learning the business. I really wanted to start small too so I can make sure that I didn't get distracted and I could have my team execute this business plan so I could focus on brokerage, which is the business we run. But that's pretty much the numbers, that's the all in. And then looking at it now on a cap rate basis, your 975, your renovation costs, your new basis, my new basis in the property is a million one seventy three, right? And my annualized rent roll is one hundred fourteen thousand. I'm just taking off again thirty five percent expenses, just so we can do an apples to apples comparison. The NOI grew from um, up to seventy four thousand from forty two thousand, a little over thirty two thousand dollar growth in NOI. So if you just take out a, that on the ba the new basis, it's a six cap. 6.3 cap, 10 times gross. I'm happy with 10 times gross. If you're at 10 times gross, I know the rates are really high right now. I'm not planning on selling this, but 10 times gross, if you can stabilize to a 10, I think that's a no brainer. Um, all in all, I learned a lot. It was a great opportunity. Um, I think it's just, uh, it is important to start consolidating. I'm starting to feel that a little bit where you got a fourplex here, fourplex there, fourplex there. You might want to start consolidating into some bigger buildings. So it's exactly the same methodology as we talk about in brokerage. It's the same thing I'm going through personally. So it's like, it would be nice to have some consolidation of and some focus onto one property, put everybody's team efforts, focus efforts onto one asset and you can optimize the outcome. But um, that's the numbers, that's the outline, that's the breakdown on everything. And uh, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me at any time. If you want us to do another video on a particular subject, let me know, send me a message, and thanks so much for watching. Hopefully this was of value. All right, we'll see you on the next one.